In this video, we're going to be looking at the residue theorem, aka Cauchy's residue theorem. And we're going to go through the three formula here, which do look horrific, but they're not. Okay, so this one here is that the residue of uh, a point, a singularity A on a function f is equal to 1 over n minus 1 factorial, uh, where n is the order of the singularity times uh, the limit as z approaches a of the n minus 1th derivative of this. It looks horrible, but it isn't. Now, when uh, the pole uh, only has a singularity of order 1, then that all simplifies to this. And then basically, uh, as the last part of the residue theorem, what we do is when we want to do an integral around uh, a curve uh, C, um, all of the residues within that uh, region are summed up, and this bit here is the real power of the residue theorem. Okay, so basically what we're going to do, the easiest way to do these three is just by doing examples. So let's go and we'll come back to them bit by bit. Okay, so let's go through. Here's example number one. Okay, so example number one is uh, the integral around the curve c dz over z, z squared plus one, where c is traversed counterclockwise and described by mod z equals a half. Okay, well, first of all, what we'll have to do is let's have a look at mod z equals a half, and basically that is just a circle around the origin on our argon diagram where this point here is a half and this here is i over 2 etc etc um, and so what we want to see is we want to see which of the singularities or poles is within this region um, and then we're going to use the residue theorem to sum them up so first of all let's just rewrite our integral around the curve as the integral of dz over z minus zero obviously z is the same as z minus zero i only like writing it like that just to show that there is a, a pole at zero and we can factorize z squared plus one as z plus i z minus i and so therefore we have three poles at zero at minus i and at plus i here is plus i which is outside of the region here is minus i which is outside of the region so the only one that concerns us is z equals zero which is within the region and also we can say that the order of our singularity is one um, if it was more than one, if let's say it was in, in z minus zero to the cube, for example, then it would be order three. If it was squared, it's order two. Uh, as it's just z minus zero to the one, it's order is one. And therefore, we can use the simplified uh, residue theorem formula, which just to rewrite it, residue at a f equals the limit as z approaches a of z minus a times f of z. That's what we uh, put in the uh, beginning. Okay, so what we're going to do is we are going to let f of z be equal to 1 over z, z squared plus 1, which is basically that. Um, and because we have the only pole that we are interested in is the one here, uh, then we're going to let a equal 0. So basically we have that the residue at 0 f is equal to the limit as z approaches 0 of, okay, well z minus a is z minus 0, I'll keep it in just to, so you can see the pattern, um, times by f of z, well f of z is 1 over z minus 0, z plus i, z minus i, okay, so basically that's what the residue is, and let's put in uh, our limit here, the z minus 0 cancels and basically that becomes equal then to the limit as z approaches zero of one over z plus i z minus i and clearly that equals one so we have that the residue of this pole here is one and therefore by the residue theorem which is up here the integral itself is equal to two pi i times the sum of the residues, well there is only one residue but we still have to multiply by 2 pi i and that gives us, so therefore the integral itself around the curve, which is this thing here, equals 2 pi i times the residue and the residue is 1, so that equals 2 pi i. That is the answer to this question. 
Okay, now in actual fact, um, I should have mentioned it at the beginning of the video, we've done a few videos on these um, uh, Cauchy integrals and stuff like that, and we could have done this one using the Cauchy integral formula because there is only one uh, pole uh, singularity, and it's of order one inside the region, so let's just do it anyway. Let's do it with the Cauchy integral formula. And the Cauchy integral formula, as a reminder, is f of a is 1 over 2 pi i, the integral f of z over z minus a dz. Um, but here we would have to let f of z be slightly different. We would let f of z be equal to this bit here. So we would have, therefore, that f of z would be equal to 1 over z squared plus 1, and a, of course, would equal 0. So therefore, we would have that f of 0 equals 1 over 2 pi i, the integral of 1 over z squared plus 1 divided by z minus a, with a is 0, z, which is what we want. That is the integral that we are seeking. And f of 0 basically is just putting 0 into our function, which is 1 over 1, which is 1. And therefore, our integral is equal to 2 pi i times f of 0, which is 1, which equals 2 pi i. So we could have done this one using the Cauchy integral uh, formula, as well as using the resi residue theorem, because there was only one pole within the region. OK, so let's have a look at example 2. Here's example 2. Um, we just need to do a little bit of, um, <clears throat> uh, first of all, it's traversed clockwise, and we've dealt with this in previous videos. All that means is when we finish doing all of our calculations, we just switch the sign of the answer, because it is assumed uh, by convention that counterclockwise is the norm. So if it's clockwise, it's just minus instead of plus, or, or plus instead of minus. Let's just have a look at the curve here. We've done this in previous videos as well. So basically, e to the i theta is the unit circle, radius 1. e to the i theta over 2, therefore, is, the unit, is, is a circle radius a half. And add i means it's translated up to i. So let's have a quick draw of that. So basically here is the point i, and our circle is like that, centred at i. So this point here, sorry, I'm drawing it particularly well, is i over 2. And here anyway is the point 0. What is important is that the point z equals 0 is outside of the region. Now let's just have a look here we have two singularities, one at z equals 0 and the other at z equals i, and only one of those, i.e. z equals i, is inside the region about which we are integrating. The other one is outside, and so therefore we only have to do one residue. OK, so here obviously is going to be our f of z for the residue theorem. Um, and we, we've found out that the only pole we need to deal with is z equals i. So basically, let's have a look. So residue of i f equals, oh, and one other thing, my apologies. Yes, this is important. The uh, pole is of order two. And therefore, we have to use the more complicated formula for the residue, not the simple one. OK, so let's write that down. Basically, it's, uh, it's equal to 1 over n minus 1 factorial limit as z approaches i, d dz. Well, in actual fact, because it's of order 2, that means n is 2, so that's 1 over 2 minus 1 factorial limit as z approaches i, d dz. We only have to take the first derivative because if we go all the way back to the formula, where is it? The formula here, it is the n minus 1th derivative, and as n equals 2 in this, it's an order 2, therefore we only have to take the first derivative. So let's go back where we are here. Uh, okay, d dz of z minus i squared times by z plus 1 over z, z minus i squared, and fortunately, that, well, <laughs> that means that the z minus i squared cancels, which means we are left with the residue is the limit as z approaches i of d dz of z, over, z plus 1 over z, which equals the limit as z approaches i of d dz of 
1 add 1 over z and differentiating that gives us the limit as z approaches i of minus 1 over z squared uh, and then putting our limit in that gives us equals minus 1 over i squared which equals 1. Okay so basically the integral that we seek is then 2 pi i times the residue so therefore this integral here is equal to 2 pi i times the residual residual residue of 1 which is equal to 2 pi i but remember we're doing it clockwise not min counterclockwise which means the answer is minus 2 pi i okay so that's that one now again uh, in previous videos we've done um, Cauchy integral formula for derivatives and as there is a single pole here uh, of order two we could have done this using Cauchy's integral formula for derivatives so why not let's do that um, let's have a look here so as a reminder Cauchy's integral formula for derivatives which we have done in previous videos in fact we did a podcast on it is equal to n factorial over 2 pi i the integral f of z over z minus a to the n plus 1 dz uh, and the pole is at i and it's of order 2 and so basically therefore we have that the integral of z plus 1 over z z minus i squared around the curve c uh, we're going to let f of z be equal to this bit z plus 1 over z which equals 1 add 1 over z as we've already seen and we're going to let a equal i which is the pole and n is equal to uh, 2 and so basically um, that sorry n is equal to uh, 1 and so there basically we now that have that we're going to have to take a f dashed of i is equal to 1 factorial over 2 pi i the integral of z plus 1 over z, z minus i squared dz. And all we need to do now is find the derivative of this. So the derivative of this is equal to, so f dashed of z is equal to minus 1 over z squared and therefore f dashed of i is equal to minus 1 over i squared which equals 1 and you can see we're getting exactly the same answer here. So therefore the integral of z plus 1 over z z minus i squared dz around the curve c using Cauchy's integral formula for derivatives is equal to 2 pi i times f dashed of i which equals 2 pi i and that's counterclockwise so therefore clockwise again we just put the minus which gives us the same answer that we got uh, here. Okay, so basically those two we could have done with either Cauchy's integral formula, Cauchy's integral formula for derivatives, or the residue theorem. Now the last one we can only do with the residue theorem, and the reason is, is because there is more than one singularity within the region. This is really where the resi residue theorem becomes uh, indispensable, when there are multiple singularities. Okay, so let's have a look at this one. Uh, clearly there is a... Res uh, singularity at z equals 2 and we can factorize this one to be z plus i z minus i so there are going to be singularities at z equals i and z equals minus i as well so there are three possible singularities but let's have a look what our region is here uh, so the region is the modulus of z minus i over 2 is 7 over 4 what that means is that z um, is always 7 over 4 away from the point i over 2 so let's just draw that um, so here is the point i over 2 and here is the circle this is c okay and i is here uh, because that point because it's 7 over 4 it's going to be greater than i and minus i is here but 2 is here so basically z equals i and z equals minus i are both within the region but z equals 2 is outside of the region okay so basically what we're going to do is we are going to make this whole thing here be f of z and remember um, that the integral is going to be the sum of the residues at each pole within the region, i.e. the sum of the residue here and the sum of the residue here. Okay, so basically, let's have a look first at the residue at i. 
and that is a pole of order 1, so therefore we can use the simple residue formula, which equals the limit as z approaches i of z minus i times z over z minus 2, z plus i, z minus i, and z minus i cancels, which leaves us the residue at i, f, is equal to the limit as z approaches i of z over z minus 2, z plus i, and that equals putting in i, i over i minus 2 times 2i, that's just putting in the limit here, z approaches i, will put z equals i in here, and that equals 1 over 2i minus 2. So we have the residue at i, now what we need to do is find the residue at minus i, so now let's have a look, the residue at minus i, f, and again that residue is of order 1, so we can use the simplified formula again, which is, uh, so that is equal to the limit as z approaches minus i this time of z plus i this time times z over z minus 2, z plus i, z minus i. And the z plus i cancels this time, and so that equals the limit as z approaches minus i of z over z minus 2, z minus i, and putting z equals minus i, that equals minus i over minus i minus 2 times minus 2i, which equals minus 1 over 2i plus 2. Right, so we now know that the sum that we seek, the integral that we seek here, is equal to the sum of all of the residues of the singularities within the region which the two of them, z equals i and z equals minus i. So all we need to do now is, multi is add the two residues up. So the residue is equal to 1 over 2i minus 2 add minus 1 over 2i plus 2. But remember, we have to multiply that by 2 pi i, and that is our integral. OK, and all we need to do now is just tidy this up. So basically that equals pi i, i plus 2 minus i minus 2 over i minus 2 i plus 2 and that equals pi i times 4 over i squared minus 4 which equals minus 4 pi i over 5 and that is the answer to this integral here minus 4 pi i over 5. OK, so you can see that once you get used to the residue theorem, um, even if there are multiple poles slash singularities within the region, whether they are of order 1 or whether they are of, of order higher than 1, you, all you've got to do is use the residue theorem, find all of the residues, add them all up, don't forget to multiply by 2 pi i, and don't then forget to, uh, uh, to reverse the sign if it's clockwise instead of my uh, counterclockwise. Okay, well, I hope you found this useful. If you have, please like this video and subscribe to the Gresty Academy YouTube channel. Thank you.